A South Florida filmmaker is back. Billy Corbin is detailing his new project, Dogfight. This is NBC6 Impact, and I'm your host, Jackie Nesprall. filmmaker Billy Corbin is releasing a new flick with a hard edge. How some people are trying to fight their way out of their neighborhoods next. Billy is back with a new film. Local director Billy Corbin is taking a deep dive into the world of backyard boxing as a way for people in South Florida to literally fight their way out of the bad neighborhoods. Joining me now, fellow University of Miami Hurricane Billy Corbin. Billy, great to look have you here. Did you get that footage from my bar mitzvah video? Look at that. <laughs> Why is that I old? look like I eat me. That's that's how heavy I am. Hey, now. it's great to have a fellow cane here on oh, the it's, show. Oh, it's great, it's great to be here. Yeah, it's all about the U, baby. So we're going to talk about the U documentaries in, in just a bit, but let's talk with um, this latest documentary, mm -hmm. Dog Fight. Why why did you decide to do a documentary about this and how popular is it? Well, it was popular. It's pretty much died off now. I think we documented what wound up being the end of the backyard fighting era in Southwest Miami-Dade in, in Perrine. And uh, Frank Alvarado and Colby Katz of the Miami New Times had done a story about it and gave us a heads up before they ran it. Um, and we had heard about it and heard, knew of it, but had never experienced it. And so they invited us down to experience the backyard fights. And there was this one particular guy named Dafir Harris, uh, Dada 5000, who became the Don King of the backyard. Backyards. He organized the fighters. He he does weigh-ins on his mom's broken uh, bathroom scale and actually put pairs the fighters up and has the the, the digital Rolodex and uh, puts on these these organized events. Really, in his mom's backyard, they built a 12 by 12 ring. Uh, no rounds, no gloves. Backyard bare wow. knuckle, and uh, it was it was quite an eye-opening uh, experience. And are there bets involved as well? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of gambling mm -hmm. uh, going on in, in, in the backyard. But what's incredible about it is that here's this, here's this underserved part of, of the community that a lot of people don't even know exists, uh, unfortunately. 22 miles southwest of, of the Miami that everybody all over the world knows, which mm -hmm. is really just 15 blocks of Ocean Drive. You know, we always joke that people outside of Miami think we only have one hotel, the Colony, on Ocean Drive, because that's the image that everybody we see knows. Everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this is sort of the, the, the real Miami. This is what most of, of Miami is actually like, which isn't isn't it's strange for someone in Miami to hear that, but for everybody else, it, it, it really is. And and how were police involved in this? They, did they allow it to happen? It's a good question. I'll say I, I really have to give props to uh, Miami-Dade Police Department, the uh, the South District Station 4 down there, because it was one of the best examples of community policing I've, I've ever seen. Uh, there's a lot of talk now about the relationship between police departments and, and the, co the communities they police, from Ferguson, Missouri, all the way down to Miami Gardens. But what the Miami-Dade Police do down down there is they really seem to have a respect and a profound understanding of the community that they police. And, and what happened there is, is basically um, this was on private property. They put up a tarp. They don't really, they not only have plausible deniability in terms of what's going on on the other side, but if someone made a 911 emergency call, they would certainly uh, respond to it. But the, the reality is, is that the only violence going on in the community when these events were occurring were happening in a 12 by 12 ring between consenting adults. Now, yeah. half of these guys were convicts? Uh, a lot of them are. I mean, again, you have this, this underserved community. You have a, a, a majority-minority population. Uh, you have a disproportionate uh, unemployment rate and, and, and people living below the poverty level. Um, you also have a lot of hardworking people as well, but you do have a lot of minority males who just disproportionately in, in America tend to be criminalized. And uh, did they use this as an avenue to get out of those neighborhoods and to get out of the system? That's sort of the tragedy of it is they see this as their greatest hope. Kimbo Slice is an internationally famous fighter who came out of this neighborhood following a very similar path. He videotaped himself fighting in, the, in a backyard, uploaded it and got discovered by professional MMA promoters and trainers, got a manager and took off from there. And so Kimbo inspired a new generation of guys to literally try to fight their way out to a better life for themselves and their families. So this will be released this coming week, right? Yeah, Thursday, March 12th mm -hmm. uh, at the Miami International Film Festival. It will make its world premiere, and then it will open Friday the 13th of March at the O Cinema in Wynwood, and most importantly at dogfight.com. That's D-A-W-G uh, dash fight.com. It'll be available worldwide to everybody by Friday the 13th. What's next quickly for Billy Corbin? Dogfight, dogfight, dogfight. Mm -hmm. It'll be available uh, if it's easier to go to cocainecowboys.com because it's mm -hmm. easier to remember. That'll redirect you, and uh, in April it'll be available on iTunes and okay. uh, Netflix. Billy Corbin, thanks so much for joining us here. Thank you. Time.